dawn of the undying. The city awoke to a silence that was as chilling as it was unnatural. The usual bustle of the streets, the honking of horns, and the hum of daily life had been replaced by an eerie stillness. The world, as they knew it, had changed overnight. News reports spoke of a mysterious virus spreading rapidly, turning the infected into mindless, ravenous creatures. The authorities had declared a state of emergency, but panic had already taken hold. People barricaded themselves indoors, fearing the unknown threat that lurked beyond their doors. In the midst of the chaos, Sarah, a young nurse at the city hospital, found herself navigating a dystopian landscape. The hospital had become a haven for those seeking refuge from the encroaching nightmare. The once sterile halls now echoed with the hushed whispers of fear and uncertainty. The infected, their eyes vacant and movements erratic, roamed the streets. Sarah's training had not prepared her for this. She glanced out of the hospital window, watching as a group of survivors sprinted past, their faces etched with desperation. The hospital intercom crackled to life, and a trembling voice announced that evacuation was imminent. Sarah joined a small group of doctors, nurses, and patients as they made their way to the helipad on the roof. The stench of disinfectant mixed with the metallic tang of fear as they ascended the stairwell. As they reached the roof, the distant moans of the infected carried on the wind. The helicopter, a lifeline amidst the chaos, hovered above. Sarah felt a mixture of relief and dread as the group hurriedly boarded. The city below was a mosaic of horror. Buildings on fire, streets littered with debris, and the relentless advance of the undead. The helicopter soared above the urban landscape, revealing the magnitude of the catastrophe below. The city, once a thriving metropolis, had descended into an apocalyptic nightmare. Sarah, her eyes fixed on the unfolding chaos, couldn't help but wonder if this was the end of life as they knew it. The helicopter touched down in a military-controlled safe zone on the outskirts of the city. The survivors disembarked, their eyes haunted by the horrors they had witnessed. The military personnel ushered them into a makeshift quarantine area, where medical examinations and questions about potential exposure awaited. Sarah, her mind racing with thoughts of loved ones left behind, clutched a small photograph in her pocket, a snapshot of her family on a happier day. The uncertainty of their fate weighed heavily on her as she submitted to the medical examinations. The days that followed blurred into a routine of uncertainty and fear. The military enforced strict protocols to prevent the spread of the virus within the safe zone. The survivors united by their shared trauma, formed makeshift communities within the confines of the military base. As Sarah settled into this new reality, she couldn't shake the feeling that the worst was yet to come. Rumors circulated among the survivors, whispers of government experiments gone awry, and the possibility that the virus was not a natural occurrence. The uncertainty fueled paranoia and mistrust, sowing seeds of discord within the fragile safe zone. In the dead of night, Sarah awoke to the sound of distant gunfire. Panic spread like wildfire through the barracks as survivors rushed to the windows, desperate for a glimpse of what was happening beyond the safety of the military walls. Flashing lights illuminated the darkness as military vehicles sped through the base. The loudspeaker crackled to life, announcing a breach in the perimeter and the imminent evacuation of non-essential personnel. 
Sarah, her heart pounding, clutched the photograph of her family as the realization set in. The safe zone was no longer safe. The survivors, now faced with a new wave of uncertainty, were herded onto transport vehicles that would take them deeper into the unknown. As the convoy moved through desolate landscapes, the remnants of civilization gave way to a world transformed by chaos. The military convoy arrived at a remote research facility nestled in the heart of the countryside. The survivors, weary and disoriented, were ushered into a sterile facility that seemed worlds away from the horrors they had left behind. As they passed through decontamination showers and sterile corridors, whispers of government conspiracies and hidden agendas grew louder. Sarah, separated from the others, found herself in a small examination room. A stern-faced scientist informed her that they were conducting tests to identify those who might carry immunity to the virus. The implications of their research, however, remained shrouded in secrecy. Days turned into weeks as the survivors became unwitting subjects in a series of experiments. Sarah, torn between the hope of a potential cure and the fear of the unknown, felt a growing unease. The sterile environment, devoid of empathy, contrasted sharply with the reality of the outside world. One night, as Sarah lay on her sterile cot, she overheard hushed conversations among the facility staff. Whispers of a government cover-up, of experiments gone wrong, and the possibility that the virus was a result of human manipulation. The survivors, it seemed, were not only victims of the undead, but also pawns in a larger, more sinister game, haunted by the uncertainty of her family's fate and the growing suspicion that the facility held more secrets than answers. Sarah plotted an escape. The survivors, once bound by the common goal of survival, now found themselves on the brink of rebellion. The time for complacency had passed. Their fight for freedom had just begun. The facility, nestled in the quiet countryside, became a battleground for the survivors' quest for answers. As the undead roamed outside, drawn by the scent of the living, the survivors confronted the facility's personnel the sterile halls echoed with the clash of ideals. The desire for safety versus the thirst for truth. Amidst the chaos, Sarah discovered a hidden laboratory deep within the facility. Files and documents revealed a shocking truth. The virus was a result of a government experiment gone awry. The infected were not just mindless creatures. They were unwitting victims of a grander conspiracy. The survivors, armed with newfound knowledge and driven by the desire for justice, faced a dilemma. The outside world, overrun by the undead, was no longer an option. The facility, despite its sinister secrets, provided a fragile sanctuary. The survivors, united by their quest for answers, chose to stay and expose the truth. As they navigated the treacherous path of rebellion within the facility, Sarah's determination to find her family intensified. The conspiracy ran deeper than she could have imagined, and the facility's personnel, once viewed as saviors, were now seen as architects of the apocalypse. The survivors, armed with makeshift weapons and fueled by the desperation of those who had lost everything, confronted the facility's leadership. A tense standoff ensued, the fate of the survivors hanging in the balance. In a climactic moment, the military personnel, torn between loyalty to their superiors and the growing realization of the atrocities committed, sided with the survivors. The facility, once a prison of secrets, became a battleground for the fight against a corrupt government and the 
undead hordes that lurked outside. As the survivors, now a ragtag group of rebels, emerged from the facility into the harsh light of day, they faced a world forever changed. The fight for survival had evolved into a fight for justice, a quest to expose the truth behind the zombie apocalypse. The story of these survivors, entwined by fate and driven by a thirst for justice, continued beyond the sterile confines of the research facility. The undead, a relentless force of nature, still roamed the desolate landscapes, and the survivors carried the burden of their shared trauma. As they ventured into the unknown, guided by the flickering flame of hope, the survivors were determined to navigate the complexities of a world where the line between the living and the undead had blurred. The truth, though elusive, was their only ally in a world where survival meant more than just avoiding the ravenous hordes. It meant exposing the dawn of the undying, 